Welcome to another tutorial in my AI for Architecture series. My name is Matt, and if you would like to learn more, please consider checking out my website, halletvisual.com, or a link to my Patreon, which I'll leave below in the video. Thank you. Enjoy. Hey everyone, welcome. My name is Matt, and we're going to do a new install video here because it's now even easier to get started with Stable Diffusion. And when I say Stable Diffusion, I'm talking about the backbone machine learning program that we have to interface with using our web browser. And then now there's the second method which we can interface with a plugin for Photoshop. There are several other interfaces out there that you can experiment with, but the two that I like to use are Automatic 1111 and the Photoshop plugin. So we're going to install Stable Diffusion and Automatic all at once using the link in my website. And we're going to go to the GitHub repository. This is the site for open source software and developers to work together. And if you have errors, you can put, um, you, you make notes when you're having problems and talk about requests. And so for Stable Diffusion, we have our release candidates down here. Click on Releases. We can install the Release Candidate. That's what RC stands for. Or you can go to the previous Stable version. But there's no reason why we can't install this, um, the RC here, 1.4. So we click on that. And down at the bottom, there's a zip file to download. And we open that and copy it into a new directory. Open our stable diffusion to C slash SD. This is my version six, so I'm putting SD six. You just want to put SD wherever you want to put it. Close that. Go into the directory and it's going to install the prerequisites for your machine instead of having to do everything manually. The first time you run it, it'll download and install all the packages now. So this is much easier. It's essentially just doing what the install on my website said. So I might remove all of this. I'm not sure. All right, so we're gonna let that run. All right, if everything goes well, then the last thing that you'll see before you can run it is downloading this large file. And so it's downloading it in the background. Now that that has installed, you're going to have a URL that you're going to be able to copy and place into your browser. And that's how we access the Stable Diffusion. But first, we want to close this down. It's technically up and running. But before we forget, we need to edit our user web UI. So this is the one you're going to run each time you want to uh, use automatic or even the plugin for st for Photoshop. You have to run this in the background. So we're going to use our text editor and come to this file and hit edit. And then in the command line, we're going to put in API and that's dash dash API space dash dash Xformers. And then below here, we're going to put git pull and that way, every time you go to run it, it'll update automatically. Once you have this, we copy that, control C, and we can place it into our browser. And we're ready to go. We'll have a look at some of these extensions, but to make sure it's working, uh, we have the one model that already came with it. That's the large download. That contains all the images that you're going to generate, all within that single file. These ones are okay, but we can start with a house on a hill near a lake. And it's a prompt description, what you want to see. All right, and then we can click on that and we go. Now it's a little painterly, right? So we can tape, take out painting. These are negative prompts. So we don't want it to look painting. We want it to look real. So we're gonna say painting and we're gonna put a negative prompt cartoon, but we're also gonna do a photo so instead of a house on a hill, we're going to say a photo of house on a hill. And so that immediately gives us something far more realistic. 
Now, the images were scraped together at 512 pixels square. We can go up to 1024, and we can have variations of that, but it's usually stick to 1024 by 768, 1024 by 512, and as a rule of thumb, these work really well with stable diffusion. Additionally, on this page, we have all of these other controls. So first you have your positive prompts, and then your negative prompts, and then we have our sampling method. And the sampling method that we use typically is the Euler A or the these DPM with the plus plus. And right now the 2M SDE Keras works really well for photorealism. And the different sampler is this is a little bit more um, is a little softer, a little um, a fantasy look. Whereas when we're doing our renderings, typically we're going to want to have this to match, uh, especially when we're doing people. So if I render this with the new sampling method and don't touch anything else, see we get that a little more crisp. It's a little bit more detailed. And we didn't change any prompts. We didn't add the word detail. It's simply the difference between the sampling method. So if we go back again, see we have it's a little fuzzier. Let's generate an image here. And uh, this one also takes, this sampling method takes longer. All right, so what's amazing about the first time you use this is that the reflections are generated. And uh, that always impresses me. So the next thing we have here are, we have our width and our size. As soon as you have an image that you like and you want to refine it, you can lock in the seed. Because right now this negative one means it's a regenerating a random seed each time. But if you have something you like and you want to lock it in and then make refinements, we hit this button to save our last seed. CFG scale, if you hover over, you'll see a, a explanation. The way this works is how the lower the number, it doesn't have to feel like it when it's generating that the the prompts can be a little more of a suggestion. And especially if you have, let's say, 50 words here, then the higher the number, and we crank, we turn up our CFG, the more it's going to try to conform to those words, as opposed to being just a loose suggestion. And it takes it more literally. So that's the best way I can explain the CFG. Now that we've generated our first image, we're going to install a few extensions. And the important ones we want are control net. And that's the first thing that we're going to need to use. We're going to go to available, load from, and then it's in order of newest, usually, yes, it's newest. And so we can search within our browser. I'm doing control F, control net. And there's going to be a few. And you're going to want the one near the bottom. You want this version that was created on February 18th. We're going to go to install. Once it's installed, we go to installed, apply and reset. Now a brief demonstration about how control networks. Once you've reset, we go to image to image. And for us ArchFizz artists, we're going to use this tab the most. This is where we take an existing image. So I have an existing rendering where I put that person. And in here we have a house, right? We can do a description. We're going to say interrogate with clip. And that's going to look at the image and create a set of prompts for us without having to type everything out. This often happens, it's the first time you run something, it has to download um, a model. Okay, once the model's downloaded, it'll provide a example of what it thinks it sees. And I typically take out the last uh, part here and just replace it with photo because I don't want the artist style that it typically adds. So you can remove that. And if we go to regenerate this image, what it's going to do is diffuse it and then rebuild it. And that's the part where the word diffusing comes in. It's almost like it dissolves the image and then tries to recreate it with the prompts. Now, the reason it completely redid this is because of our denoising strength down here. And so the lower the number, the less dissolve and diffusing that happens to our original image. 
So if we simply lower that, we're going to get something really similar. It's, it's accurate, but it's a reproduction of this image. And then the higher the amount, the stronger the uh, change will be. That also works in combination with the CFG scale. So the higher the number, the more it wants to stick to these prompts. The lower the number, the more creative it can be based on our original image. So the CFG works together with the denoising to create that final image you're looking for. Let's say we really want to change this image drastically. And of course, as with architecture, we're really going to want to maintain that image. Okay, we don't want this. We really want this table, or at least not even the table. We want the structure of this wall. So that's where control net comes in. We load control net. We don't have to drag this anymore into our image. We don't have to drag a copy. It'll know that if it's blank, it's using our base image. And so there's several options. And let's try to recreate a line drawing of this that it'll can hold on to while it's regenerating a new image, something like this. Okay, so we're going to keep everything the same and we're going to regenerate this, but we're going to win engage control net. So we have to turn it on, enable, and we're going to pick line art. All right. And the preprocessor, I'll zoom in. The preprocessor here automatically gets selected and we can choose other preprocessors. This is going to give it the style that we're asking for. Now it needs a model and we haven't downloaded any models yet. And this is where we need to go in and download a lot of files. So if we go to my website and we want line art for now, you'd probably want to download all of these, but we'll go to line art and we're going to download this model and the config file and download those models into our working or SD stable diffusion directory, whatever you've called it, mine is SD six. I'm going to go to extensions, control net, models, and they have already a lot of the config files, but they have to, the names have to match exactly. So always download the one that comes with this, uh, with, the, with the large model file. So I have to download that config file here and drag that over. So now that they match, Let's go back here. We can refresh this model by clicking the refresh button and now it'll match. When we click on our button, it'll automatically next time just load the preprocessor along with the model. We can change the resolution. Uh, I like to make sure I match the file that I'm working from. And in this case, this was, I believe it's around a 1024 by 1024. So we can increase that. And we're going to match our resolution roughly. And, and it created this line art image from what we have here. Okay, once we know that that's working, the next thing to install is Civit AI again. And we want to get a new model that's really up to date, not just the default that came with Stable Diffusion. All right, so I initially, when I come up, you will have a variety of very non-architectural based checkpoints. We want to get pick one that usually starts with a realistic photo. Narrow that down. Instead of going to buildings, just type in realism. And then any one of these at the top, any of these are good. So uh, I was experimenting recently with this, this Purist Epic Realism. You download that into the master folder, Stable Diffusion. I put mine in SD models slash stable diffusion and here it is here Pierce we go to render and refresh this and we go to render and we'll get a house on a hill so now that we're using this model we can do all sorts of things from there with this is a good example you can do most of your testing with um, with one of these realism models from civet AI if you want to get information to recreate using this person's model let's say we want to have a look at this lighthouse storm okay we'll click on that and it has down here all the prompts that it used so you can copy this control c control v we're going to go text to image so 
In this case, we're, we're getting out of here. We're going to go to text to image, paste, and then we have our negative prompts, which we don't really need the negative prompts. We're going to put them in. Now, I don't have his model yet installed, but we can generate from, from here. You can see how they're using the brackets. And then we're now, the new thing is to add the brackets with an additional value. One is that word. And I guess people are using that instead of doing the triple brackets like I am. So that's the old style. Now it's to put um, colon a number. We have the model name, steps, seven for CFG scale. And if you wanted to recreate this exactly, you could even copy the, the seed. and generate. Now, it might not come out the same because we have to match the resolution. So sometimes the only way to do that is to download it. It's actually 768. So 768, or the image 768. There we have it. So that's how you can recreate work. The next thing I'd like to show you to install is the Photoshop plugin. So if you're following along on my website, I'll have the link. Uh, if this is you're watching this on YouTube, then I'll put a link below. But we're going to go to this gentleman's uh, repository on GitHub. Scroll down to releases, just like we did the for automatic 11.11. All right, we take the last one that he's released, and we're going to download this file right here. So we'll download that. It's a pretty small file. All you have to do is just double click it. And in this case, I have it. So I'm going to say replace and we double click that and we're going to say install and that's it. And now you can open it up in Photoshop. And now I don't know if you have Creative Cloud Desktop installed, if that's going to pop up or not. But the idea is that you just double click this and it's going to install the plugin. Now, remember, you have to have Stable Diffusion running in the background. So once you have the, the plugin installed and Photoshop loads, we can treat the uh, workspace similar to what we had with, um, with Automatic 11.11. So you're going to use rectangle prompts. If the plugin does not show up, it's up here, it's just under plugins, this one, and then just load that, okay? You have to have this running in the background. You put your prompt, and this works a little bit like generative fill a house on a hill and we're going to do text to image the same we have in painting and image to image here and so you're going to get an error the first time you can work on your um, you can use stable diffusion in photoshop we collapse that group down and then you can start working on very specific areas of your image i cover a lot more of this in my tutorials i can't get too sidetracked we have one more thing to install. Right now it's available in extensions, available load from. We do a search, Cozy, and it's this fellow's Cozy Nest. We install that. Once it's installed, apply and restart. What I like about this is the generate button remains on the top. So if we type in test, there we have an image and then that's, that will just remain. Then we can just scale here on this side. And I don't really like this coding type of interface. We go into the Cozy Nest set settings and Cozy Prompt. And I don't, yeah, enable, I turn that off. All right, save. So, great guys, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed that tutorial and I've covered uh, just a few things just to get you started. There's a lot more we can talk about, um, but yeah. Thanks guys for watching, bye.